Hello everyone and welcome to iBasiac. Well today's video is a demonstration and review of this Miele Complete C1 Cat and Dog Powerline Vacuum Cleaner. Now during the course of this video I'm going to do several demonstrations, performance demonstrations, and I'm also going to see how convenient the machine is to use. The first demonstration will be on pet hair because this is a cat and dog model so it should have no trouble whisking away those clinging pet hairs from your carpets. I'll also be seeing how well it cleans general dirt on a carpet and of course I'll be seeing how well it cleans a hard floor. I'll also be looking at the convenience of the machine, if it's easy to use on stairs, how easy it is to pull along and how easy it is or difficult to change the dust bag. So, without any further ado, I'll give you a quick tour of the machine, point out the features, and then it's down to the pet hair tests. You get two main floor nozzles supplied with this particular Miele. The Cat and Dog Turbo Brush, which is designed obviously to clean cat and dog hairs from your carpets. You also get the standard carpet and floor nozzle. In this instance, this is the Miele FiberTech nozzle. That's best to use on your hard floors with the brush down and you can use it on carpets and rugs that won't take a brushing action. So if you've got very delicate rugs or lightweight rugs, you may find that it's better to use the FiberTech head rather than the turbo brush. The three small tools you also get supplied with this cleaner are stored on board. To access them, you simply press this button and you can see the three cleaning tools here. So inside we get a standard upholstery nozzle, that's for doing your stairs, upholstery and curtains. You also get rather a short crevice nozzle for doing down the sides of your chairs and those nooks and crannies. And finally, a dusting brush with synthetic brushes. It's adjustable, you can angle it various heights. So if you want to dust higher up like your shelves or your pelmets, you can angle it like that. They all fit neatly inside the machine. So they're always to hand ready to use. This Miele has a variable speed control, so you can adjust the suction to suit whatever you're cleaning. So a minimum power is more suitable for doing your lightweight curtains and uh, delicate fabrics. And you can turn the dial all the way up to max for cleaning hard floors. There's a check bag indicator that will show orange when you need to empty the bag or if you have a blockage. And to access the bag, you simply lift this cover. And as you can see, it takes Miele High Clean FJM bags identified by a red collar. So when you're looking for new bags, make sure it's got a red collar and it will fit this machine. Behind the bag, I'll just remove it. It's a little bit stiff because it's new. We have a motor protection filter. That's normally included with the pack of bags you get from Miele. As long as you buy genuine bags, you should get a spare motor protection filter. The filter you don't get and you do have to replace approximately every year is the active air clean filter simply slides out now this one has got charcoal granules in it it's designed to trap the odors that you can often get when you're using a machine when you've got pets in the house they can smell rather because the the, the dirt the hairs fester in the bag and obviously the air passes through them and back into your room so this is what the active charcoal filters, the active air clean filter, helps to prevent. That slots back in. There is a new device on Miele filters, this time strip, it is supposed to indicate when you need to replace it. But I would say, depending on use of course, once a year should be sufficient. Just slot the bag back in. If you don't put the bag in correctly, it won't allow you to close the bag door. On the back of the cleaner you've got a parking slot so you can easily park the wand and whichever nozzle you've got fitted. There is a little parking bracket on the turbo nozzle and also on the regular FiberTech nozzle. As well as the parking slot you also get a storage slot on the side of the machine. That's useful for when you're carrying the machine or when you're storing it. Either of the nozzles will fit into that slot. You can compress the telescopic tube down and then you can just pop that in your cupboard. It takes up very little space. When you finish cleaning, there's an automatic cord rewind feature. With a large pedal, you can either press with your foot or your hand. 
So in front of me I've put down a load of dog hair supplied by Lolly the Golden Retriever and I've spread it and rubbed it in all over this man-made fibre rug so it's really sticking to the surface. And to test the efficiency of this mealer, I'm going to use both nozzles that come supplied with this model. First of all, I'm going to see if the FiberTech carpet and hard floor nozzle makes any difference. So I'll pass it backwards and forwards down one side of the rug. And then I'm going to follow up with the turbo brush that you also get supplied. I just want to see if there's a marked difference between a turbo nozzle and a straight suction nozzle to see whether it's worth paying extra for a cat and dog or animal version of a vacuum, or would a straight suction nozzle do just as well? Okay, well, we're just about to find out. So, first of all, with the FiberTech nozzle, and then followed by the cat and dog turbo nozzle. So, starting with the FiberTech nozzle, in both instances, I'm going to use the vacuum cleaner on its full suction setting. As you can see, I thought, to be honest, I thought it would do a bit better than that, but it's basically just, it's just tickled the surface of the dog hair. I don't think it's removed very much. Some of it has stuck to the bottom of the nozzle, but it's not actually being sucked into the machine. I suppose if I rub and scrub, I'll probably get a better result than just the straightforward back pass. But anyway, I'll pop that down and attach the extension wand to the turbo nozzle. I think this is going to make a difference, let's hope so. Well, as you can see, there's a reason why this machine is called Cat and Dog because it's done a very good job. Now you'll see that you'll be saying, well, what's that line? As you can see, there's a definite, and you can see it very well on this green carpet with the white hair, there's a definite line that's been left. Now that's common with most turbo nozzles, most upright vacuum cleaners, most power nozzles. You always get a line of uncleaned dirt or hair because underneath, and as you can see actually, some of the hair has caught around the brush, but you can actually clean that up. You can remove this cover using a coin or a screwdriver, take these two screws, undo them and this nozzle plate comes off and you can use a pair of scissors to clean. Obviously this is an extreme example but this is what will happen to your turbo nozzle after a while. You'll need to remove the hairs manually. That's one disadvantage but it does actually clean the hairs much better. So as I say that is a very good result. What I'm going to do to do a fair test, I'm just going to try the regular head again, but I'll put my back into it, do a bit of rubbing and scrubbing to see if I can make a difference. Far too much like hard work. It might have picked a bit of it up, but I was really pressing down. And any more of that, well, that's too much like hard work for me. I'm not going to be doing that. So let's use the cat and dog turbo nozzle. And hopefully, I'll be able to clean all this hair up in just a few minutes. Or oh, not even that. So, as you can see, complete clean sweep. It's a definite thumbs up for this turbo nozzle.
Okay, so we've seen that the Miele Complete C1 cat and dog power line looks like a good choice for pet owners. But what about other types of dirt? Well, in front of me, I put more dirt down on this carpet than you're likely to see in the average home. But it comprises of all sorts of different types of dirt that I've used in various demos. Uh, there is pet hair in here. There's also carpet fibres. There's rice, there's couscous, there's dust, there'll be flour and sugar in there somewhere. Just general dirt and a lot of it. So again, I'm going to do another test of both nozzles. First of all, the Fibertech nozzle and then the Turbo nozzle. In this case, I think the Fibertech nozzle will make a difference. You will definitely see a clean line. It's just not so good, as you saw, not so good for pet hair. But let's see how it does for general dust and dirt. Well, as you can see, that's a definite improvement. Looking closer, it's got rid of all the dust, it's got rid of all the larger particles, but on closer inspection, there is some dirt left. There's, it's very hard to pick up on camera. It looks very impressive in my viewfinder, but it's not quite so impressive when you look close up. I can see some black dog hairs from my other dog still in the pile. Obviously, I've just gone back and forward a couple of times, so it's, you know, it probably would pick it up with a bit more rubbing and scrubbing, but why should we? We don't want any hard work when we're cleaning. I need to clean this carpet. So this side, I'll just take off the nozzle. Incidentally, all the attachments, the main attachments fit with Miele's click fit system, which is very convenient. So the nozzles stay put, trying to get, there we go, stay put very securely. They don't come apart until you press this little button here, and then you can just release the extension wand. And then when you want to use the other tool, just click it in place, twist it, until you hear that satisfying click. So there we go. So onto the end of the extension wand. If I try and keep out of all this dirt, I'm going to pop the turbo nozzle back on. So it's good, obviously, for pet hairs, but is it going to be better for this type of dirt? Let's see, shall we? Switch on. It struggled a bit. Again, it's left this uncleaned line where the belt is, but obviously when you vacuum, you're going to be overlapping your strokes. This won't be noticeable anyway in your home because obviously it's an extreme example, so you will see that there's a little bit of line uncleaned. But in the areas where the brushes have been, it's certainly an improvement. It's not a dramatic improvement, I have to be honest, between the straight suction nozzle and the turbo on this particular test. But the turbo nozzle, although yes, it does add to the noise of the vacuum cleaner, it is a lot easier to push than the standard nozzle. So if you find you know, vacuuming a little bit more difficult, a cleaner with a turbo nozzle, certainly a Miele with a turbo nozzle, nozzle, you'll find it's easier to use. Anyway, I can't leave this mess. So I'm just going to clean the rest of this up at the sort of speed you would use when you're vacuuming. left a little bit, I expect, I'm trying to look at my viewfinder. Oh, well, I've done quite a good job there. There's still a bit of dirt just slightly off camera, but the area that I've gone over, oh, it spat a little bit out, but anyway, I'll get that in a minute. All in all, it's a very effective nozzle. So if you've got pets and if you've got a lot of dirt, then I would go for a Miele cat and dog machine. 
Okay, now we've seen how well it cleans carpets, but what about floors? Let's go into the kitchen and see if it'll tackle a load of mess on my kitchen floor. Right, so I tried to make some OT crumble biscuits, but got a bit carried away, and most of the ingredients ended up on the floor. So in front of me, I've got some flour, rolled oats, and brown sugar to cope with. So obviously I'm going to see if this Miele cleaner will cope. Now I'm going to use it on its full suction setting, which is the recommended setting for hard floors. But I'll just point out to you that this floor is a cushion vinyl floor and it's not actually stuck down everywhere. So I've found in the past with many vacuum demonstrations I've done, the suction has been too powerful and it's brought the floor up towards the nozzle and basically it's hardly picked anything up. So I will try it on full power initially through the middle of this dirt, but if I find that that's too much, I will lower the power and see if that's better because sometimes too much suction is a bad thing. So starting off on maximum, we'll just pass the nozzle forward and back through the middle of all this dirt. say that's pretty good. We should have let the machine run a bit longer. It spat out a little bit at the end just off camera. Now obviously it's not complete clean sweep because I did see on the reverse stroke that it seemed to be picking up the floor more than the dirt so it was sort of leaving some. So I'm going to try it just, to, just for fun, just to see anyway. I'm going to try it actually on its minimum setting. The lowest section available and just see if it'll pick the dirt up without actually sucking the floor up. Well, as you can see, I don't know what that's doing there, there's a little nail, don't want it picking that up, although it probably could cope with that. It has, as I've used the machine as you'd normally use it, it has picked most of it up, but I think the minimum power is a little bit too low, so I'm going to try it on the rug setting, which is two notches up, see how it copes on that setting. I think that's a good compromise. For my particular floor, obviously you'll have a different floor. You might find that maximum suction is necessary if you've got floorboards or like a stone floor, you'll probably find that you'll need the extra suction. But for a cushioned vinyl floor, you'll find that you won't need the full force. And what I will say about this nozzle, which a lot of the nozzles does do, it doesn't have the snow ploughing effect. Normally, I'm using a nozzle like this and it can be pushing a lot of the larger particles, especially in this case the rolled oats, would be pushed in front of the nozzle and not picked up by the machine until you tilt the nozzle back and go over. But with this one it's not snow ploughed. So for hard floors too it's a definite thumbs up. Carpets excellent, hard floors excellent. It's no more than I expected from this Miele vacuum. I'm sat on my stairs now to see how convenient this Miele cat and dog vacuum cleaner is to use on your stairs. Now it does stand on its end for stair cleaning which makes things a bit easier but I'm just going to find out how many stairs we can clean first without having to move the machine. So I'll pop it down at the bottom of the stairs and see how many steps we can get up. So I've positioned the cleaner at the bottom of the stairs, stood on its end to hopefully give me a little bit extra reach. Let's see how many stairs I could safely clean. Right, so let's see how many stairs I can clean with a machine safely at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can safely clean six stair treads with the machine at the bottom of the stairs. If you want to carry on cleaning the rest of the stairs, 
It's, it's not the lightest machine, it's not the heaviest, it's got a nice carry handle. So if you've got the strength, you can actually carry the machine with one hand while using the nozzle with the other. Although, because it will stand on an average step, you can position the machine a little bit further up and continue with your cleaning. You'd have, have to put it up a little bit further than I have to get to the top step, but it's easily doable. I've got two flights of stairs in my house, so like many people, I need a vacuum cleaner that's easy to use on stairs. I won't pretend that it's not as easy as, say, a little handheld vacuum cleaner, but this will do a better job. You can use, of course, the small nozzle. Let's pop the machine down. You can use a small nozzle for the stairs. Obviously, you can use a crevice nozzle from time to time to do around the edges. But you can also fit, I'll just grab it, you can also fit the main turbo nozzle directly to the end of the handle. So basically now, you can clean your stairs in much less time, like this, and also you've got the benefit of the rotating brush, so it's helping to lift the pile, and if you've got dogs that like to go, or cats, that like to go up and down your stairs and leave a trail of hair, obviously, the turbo nozzle is the best nozzle in this instance. Well, that just about ends my review and demonstration of the Miele Complete C1 Cat and Dog Powerline Vacuum Cleaner. Would I recommend it? Yes, 100%. You can't really go far wrong with a Miele Cat and Dog. If you go for this model or one of the other models you can get in the range, they all do a fantastic job in my experience. I can only show you what I've experienced in my own home, obviously, Homes, carpets, flooring, they all differ. You might get different results in your home, but normally it's a pretty safe bet. When you buy a Miele, you're buying a decent vacuum cleaner. Now, if you want this machine, I believe it's only available at the moment from Curry's stores in the UK. It's an exclusive model to them, and it's based on an older body shell design. There are newer designs of cat and dog machines you can get. Uh, I can't think of the <laughs> names at the moment. They begin with C. I think it's a C3. But there's other versions you can get. You can get a more compact, lighter version as well if you want something lighter. And of course, there's a multitude of different Miele machines you can buy. Just check Miele's website for their full range. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting. There will be some more Miele cleaners coming up on my channel. So please subscribe and you'll be notified when I upload those demonstrations. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.